Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! How does the Holy Spirit help the believer to rise to excel, to command results in this kingdom? Number one, by revealing the mind or the will of God. The first dimension of the help of the Spirit to the believer is the revelation of the mind or the will of God. This is very, very important. Two scriptures very quickly. Romans chapter 8, please, and verse 27. Romans 8, 27. The Bible says, And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Please, someone shout it. Say the will of God. Will of God. One more time. Say the will of God. Will of God. Now, the way God designed the administration of spiritual power, please look up. The administration of spiritual power and even the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that everything revolves around the will of God. Are we together now? The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God or to keep you in the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God has no assignment. Listen very carefully. One of the ways you attract the power of God is staying in the will of God. If you are out of the will of God and he brings his power called his mercy, the assignment of that dimension of his power is to bring you into the will of God. Is that true? So it's important as a rule of thumb, the entire circumference of the believer's life must revolve around and within the will of God. If and when you are in the will of God, the power of God keeps you. And you, you, once you are in the will of God, that is where your immunity is established. Once you are in the will of God, that is when your relevance, the moment you are outside of the will of God, you are outside of the region where you make yourself a prey to Satan. Are we together now? Provided the prodigal son was in the house, there was nothing that could happen to him. No lack, no insufficiency. The moment he went out of the house and out of the covering of his father, depletion began until he got to a point where he fed with the swine. Notice that in his restoration, all that he did was to return back home. That was it. That was all he did to return back home. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. And he got up and did exactly what he said he would do. His returning back to the house, celebration began immediately. Is someone learning? So when the Holy Spirit helps men, he reveals to us the will of God for our lives part time. Romans chapter 12, please. When you read from verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that ye present or offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice. He calls it holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship or service. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Listen carefully now. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. So everything the Holy Ghost does through the word in your mind is to bring you and keep you in the will of God. Are we together? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost to bring you into the will of God. Jesus himself found where it was written concerning him. Is that in your Bible? Luke chapter 4. He found where it was written concerning him and then he began to quote the scripture or to read it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. When he was done, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He found where it was written concerning him. And the Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes, he will guide you in, in all truth. 
including the will of God. There are many people today, listen carefully please, there are many people today who are farming like Elisha, whereas their destiny is to be prophets over nations. It is the assignment of the Holy Spirit. There is no guessing the will of God. You don't even know it. There is no possibility of knowing it. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Father. The Bible said no man knows what is in the heart of a man except the spirit of that man. The moment you begin to pray in the spirit, I wish we had time to deal with this. Among the many things that happen is that you cooperate with the Holy Spirit to begin to search the archives in the mind of the Father. What is in the heart of the Father for you in 2023? It is a risk to start taking steps on assumption. You have to wait until the will comes. The trigger for your action is the knowledge of the will. As a man of God, don't assume that God wants you to expand. Don't assume that God wants you to start doing church. Don't assume that God wants you to organize a healing meeting. No, it is important that you walk your your confidence is knowing that you are in the will of God. In fact, Apostle John was teaching us on prayer and he said, this is the confidence that we have. Is that still in your Bible? That when we ask anything according to his will, we know that he heareth us. So I don't know that I'm hurt just because of the volume of what I'm saying or because of the time expended in prayer, as important as that is. My confidence is that I am, God is so determined to make us walk in his will that he created a system of capturing that will as scripture and still left it, still in addition with the Holy Spirit so that we are entire in his will. Someone say the will of God. Say it again. There are many of us right now, we need to go back and ask God. This movement have been moving around the circle. Today, I think I'm a man of God. Tomorrow, maybe a businessman. Next week, I, 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 it's like I had Zamfara. Then next week, it's like I had Potakot. You need to take away that, those haziness. Where Satan deceives believers is becoming like an angel of light. And that whole assignment is to make you sincerely fear out of the will of God. Satan does not necessarily need to fight you by attacking you. If he can take you out of the will of God, it was designed trying to destroy you by default. Is someone learning? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost. You ask your man of God, how did he start his prayer platform? If you think he's just luck, do it. That's when you will see the difference between the will of God and the strength of a man. When it is the will of God, simple and even foolish things produce results that for your lifetime you cannot explain because the jealousy of God is behind it. God can speak to a man. I remember years ago, this was way before just, you know, social media was just at its infancy in Africa when God gave me a word. At that point, he told me, he said, do not, he was in the place of prayer. He said, carry your teachings, raw audio, not really very clear, the best of whatever we could do at that time. And he said, all you need to do, this is my instruction, this is what I want. Put it and make it available for people and my angel will take it to the nations of the earth. That foolish instruction. You see, you can copy today and it will not work because it didn't come as a revelation of the will of God. This is the danger of blindly copying things. You can be inspired, but be sure you are in the will of God. Moses said, I'm not going to go and embarrass myself before Pharaoh. One, verify you are the one sending me. Number two, give me a sign. I know who Pharaoh is. When he stood before Pharaoh and said, Thus said the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. You would think Pharaoh say, my God. I'm sorry, who is that God that I offended? He laughed and he said, you must be silly, Moses. I think you've forgotten that this is Egypt, the center of wizardry. So this is all you came to do to embarrass yourself here? Janus and Jambas, come and show him that if it is a rod he brought to become a snake, go back and tell your God is not powerful enough. And they turned it effortlessly. You would think because the power of God were there, automatically it should become the rod of, um, of, of Janus and Jamba should not even become a serpent. But it became a serpent right there. To the point that you could not know which one is real or which one is fake. 
But then God did something powerful. The rod of Moses swallowed the rod of, 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 of Pharaoh and did not increase in size. And he held one and kept it. The God of heaven. Listen to me. Our confidence in doing the things that we do is knowing that we have paid the price with the Spirit to verify and re-verify that we are in the will of God. When you are in the will of God, it does not matter who believes or who does not believe. The most important thing is that the jealousy of the one who sends you is behind and before you. For someone, God can speak to you and say, listen, people in Abia State are waiting. You are the next entrepreneur to rise. And while he's speaking, one of the ways you will know that God is speaking to you is because you cannot do what he's saying by your strength. If God tells you something you have the power to do, most likely he's not the one you heard. He will tell you what only him can do through you. If it is God that you hear what you heard should make you afraid. It should make you run back to him and say, so how do we make this happen? How do you look at an ordinary man, no one, say build an ark that will take all the animals? Three stories. He didn't say, are you an architect? He didn't say, have you tried building a small boat? That's God for you. God can look at someone you have never stood before any president and he will speak to you and say, the 12 presidents I'm sending you to, make sure you preach Christ to them. And while he's speaking, you do not even have a passport. God for you. He will speak in a way that you must return back to him for the remaining details. If it is not God, listen, one of the ways you know you are in the will of God is you will never hear everything the first time. Mm -mm. There are details he will hide and it is only your hunger that will take you. Hallelujah. The will of God. Let's finish up. Number two. How does the Holy Spirit help the saints to rise and to excel? The ministry of guidance. The Holy Spirit helps men by guiding them. Number one is the revelation of the will of God. Number two is to guide you. John 16, we read it earlier, 12 and 13. 13 says that when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Please look up. This is powerful. I wish I had time to explain this scripture for you. That means even when you are standing in the truth, you must be guided for it to profit you. Just because you are in proximity with the truth does not mean you will be blessed by it. The truth can kill. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless automatically. Truth is like a knife. You can hold a knife in a way that it will injure you. A knife that is supposed to cut the vegetable to make the food that we eat. Because you did not hold it well, it can still injure you. Women will tell you there are times that they did not hold the knife well. And they ended up injuring themselves the, a beautiful tool that was supposed to help enhance your efficiency. When Satan tries to use a lie and it does not work, he will use the truth to kill you. Ask Jesus. When he came to Jesus, he said, turn this stone to bread. Jesus said, it is written. The next time Satan spoke, he said, it is written too. Since it is truth, let's use truth now. It is written. Sanctify them by your truth, he says. Thy word is truth. So it is not every time he will come looking like a wizard. There are times he will speak like a preacher and mislead you with relevant scriptures into derision. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. The Holy Ghost. This is where many people who just embrace scripture and ignore the Holy Spirit. This is a piece of literature. This is a piece of archaeology. This is a piece of history. When you open it, it is a book. When the scrolls are unlocked, it becomes a word. This book you see must be both opened and unlocked. There are seals that close it. It is opened to the optical eyes, but not yet opened in the spirit. 
And it is dangerous to read the book when it is just open and not unlocked. Because you will find many coincidences. At the end of it, you will end up hating the Bible. Because it will look like a mix of nonsense. Written by people, arguments here and there. A lying spirit came from the Lord. What does that mean? Do not be over-righteous. What does that mean? Because all those things are unfruitful to the mind if the only thing you do is to open the book. Only the spirit sustains the, the capacity. And you will see a scripture you've been reading forever. And you will stand in tears. There are times that you can carry one verse for days and you are sitting there and it's as if you found a gold mine and you are rejoicing over a scripture, you quote it and someone says, that's nice, you are learning scripture, but something in the name of Jesus, the miracle of open eyes, guided by the spirit, in the name of Jesus, may that begin to walk in your life from tonight. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit guides men. There are various ways he guides. There is a difference between leading and guiding. Or there is a difference between direction and guidance. Let me tell you how to direct. Please look up. If I'm to direct you out of this auditorium, here's what I'm going to say. Move straight, turn right, and be on your way. That's direction. Guidance will say, follow this way. There is a step. Be careful. That step can hurt you. So just because you know the road, you do not know the contours, the very things. The Bible says the Holy Spirit guides. He does not just lead. He leads, but he guides. Many of you have been led. You need guidance. You are in the place of the will of God, but how to navigate the steps? Now you do not know. He told you this man is the one who God will use to lift you. Now you are with him. But what do you do? Do you walk up to him and say, you have been wasting my time. God said you are the one who will lift. You see, now direction is correct, but you need guidance. It's the Holy Spirit who will guide you and say, you know what? Um, take a meal and just go and give him and bless him and don't say anything. That's guidance. You now go there and say, oh, who is this? What do you do? I am so, so, so and so. Thank you. You are the kind of person we are looking for. See me tomorrow. Two of you can be led, but only one was guided. Most people have not opened up themselves to be guided by the Spirit. You can be in the right environment and still weary yourself. You need to pray, guide me, guide me, guide me. Spirit of the living God, guide me, guide me. For when he guides you, in addition to his leadership, there is no darkness for you. Eventually, it may not make sense while he's guiding you. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. It is like driving again. When you plot the map on your phone of a location, it tells you, okay, you'll get there in one hour, you see. But it doesn't just tell you the location. It keeps zooming and you, you keep finding out that it is helping you. Is that true? And there are times you go to a road and it is closed. It will reroute it again and show you how to still get there. Direction is not a problem. It was not your fault. Someone decided to put a barricade on what would have been the road. It takes guidance. It now reroutes and recalculates the time. Hmm. Guidance. Let's finish up. The last way the Holy Spirit helps the believer to rise, to excel, to make impact and advancement for the kingdom is through the ministry of empowerment. The third dimension of his help is through empowerment. Mm. This is powerful. He empowers us. It is true. And there are two dimensions to this empowerment. There is the empowerment within and there is the empowerment upon. This is where we'll pray. The empowerment within has the assignment to produce Christ-likeness 
to produce growth and maturity. Every time you see spiritual immaturity, there is no stature and character in the believer. He has ignored the ministry of empowerment within. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. When the Holy Spirit empowers you, regardless where you came from, regardless the natural traits and limitations that came with where you came from, he will grant you grace. There are times that you who should be angry and speak to anybody and say, when I'm angry, even God gives way. You see, all those kinds of things, they, they fade away because there is an empowerment within. Most of us do not have that strength in the inner man. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, I like Amplified. It says, finally be strong in the Lord. Amplified says, draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. There is an implication. If Christ dwells in you in truth, there must be an effulgence of the character of the kingdom. Is that true? I should know that Christ is at work in you because it should be difficult to find out whether you are an Igbo man or Yoruba or Hausa. I should even be at a loss trying to trace you to an earthly place because you have been so transformed. You almost do not carry any negative traits that is associated with your territory. I should be surprised when you tell me, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But he's walked upon me. Listen to me. It is not enough to just embrace the engracing, the anointing, the empowerment of the spirit starts from within. So you find out that he empowers you to kill some things, they just die like that. Anger, bitterness, all of these things. Your life changes. People who look at you and say, I used to know this person, but you are changed. Not by your ability, but by the ability of the spirit. The empowerment within produces Christ-likeness, produces growth and maturity, stamina within. Then, the empowerment upon. In fact, let's look at Ezekiel 36, 27. Let me just give that one scripture. My apologies for stretching the time. It says, and I will put my spirit within you. Say within you. Someone say within you. And cause you to walk in my status, he says, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Why? Because there is an empowerment within. Within. How do you love in such a wicked world? How do you show kindness in such a wicked world? You have to be empowered. Your feelings will betray you a thousand times. You will need an empowerment from within. Most people, what you call the fruit of the spirit, you see, listen, you can impart a gift to a handkerchief, but you can't impart the fruit of the spirit to a handkerchief. A gift can come on anything animate or inanimate, but a fruit is proof of maturity. There is no tree that has a fruit at infancy. For every single gift, he matched it with a corresponding fruit. By the time the workings of the spirit is within you, let me tell you sincerely, you will truly become another man. That when people look at you, the only example they can tell is Jesus Christ. And it does not matter the background. It's a progressive work of the spirit, but that it is sponsored by the empowerment of the spirit. And so you can love even when it, is, it does not seem possible to love. You can give you can be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. Are we together? You who would not even help children before. Now something has happened to you, you are changed. Let me tell you the truth. I submit to you that if you have worked with the Holy Spirit and it does not translate to potent conversion from within, either your experience is a lie or you have not maximized that ministry of empowerment within hallelujah because it does not seem marketable to embrace the power within nobody will most likely sow a seed for you for being very nice if you if you raise somebody from a wheelchair quickly you can say come and take this estate and go but for being a person of solid character the results usually take a long time before you see the benefits 
So most people will not want to pursue that. It is easy to pursue the one that brings, has a lot of charismatism around it. But you see, in the realm of the spirit, let me tell you, the things that may not seem to matter in this realm, that is what measures stature in the spirit. Are we together? It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. There was a mindset, there was an understanding, the workings of the spirit, hanging on the cross, and yet looking at John and looking at all these people. Same thing happened to the Matthias, Philip, uh, uh, when, when Philip was, uh, Stephen was about to be Matthias. Empowerment within, and then now empowerment upon. Micah 3 8. Micah 3 8. The Spirit helpeth. But truly I am full of power. How? By the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power. Power to do. Power to manifest. Power to go to the nations. Power to pray. Power to heal the sick. Power to redefine possibilities in the lives of people. No man was born automatically with power, ladies and gentlemen. Men and women, by blindly walking with this spirit of grace, they encounter tremendous levels of power. I can tell you with all humility, if you truly encounter the genuine power of the Holy Spirit, not a semblance of it, your life will never be the same. Not as a preacher, not as a businessman. You may have heard me say it. He said, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. He does not anoint cups. The cup only shows what is on your head. If your cup is empty, don't blame the cup. It is that there is nothing on your head. You anoint my head. It is not my head that shows it. My cup runneth over. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. We're going to pray now. Look at what the Bible says. This will be my parting scripture. I can do what an arrogant statement how can a man stay in the world of men, Pastor Jerry, and bear to make such a statement? You can do all things. Do you know how many things are there to be done? I can do all things means I can go anywhere. I can see anybody. How dare you make such a statement? Where did you come from? Who is your father? What leverage did he give you? Yet the apostle will say, regardless what you bring before me, here is my verdict. I can do how many things? <laughs> now listen, listen, listen. You go and stand in front of the road in your city and shout this statement and see how many people will look at you and say, I used to respect you thinking you are humble, but I'm disappointed you can do all things. How do you talk to a man who does not want to talk to you? Is part of all things. How do you raise the money to build something of a, a multi-billion project with integrity? How do you lay hands on someone who has been sick for 25 years, stage 4 cancer? I can do all things. Please hear me. Run conference. I came to release a grace on you tonight. Please listen. Please listen. I want to show you a mystery. And then we'll pray. I can do all things. Who makes such a statement? In our world today, did you not know what happened during COVID? You can do all things? Are you the one who keeps your life? Paul would say, I can do all things. If he stopped there, we would have edited that statement and charged him for foolishness, immaturity, pride, and the manifestation of the flesh. If Paul stopped there with those five words, we would even legitimately edit that and strike it and say, in learning Paul, learn other aspects, but when you get here, jump it. 
But here is my message tonight. Leave the first five. Read the remaining. One, two, read. Through Christ. One more time. Now read the first five, then finish it with the first five. Are you ready? One, two, read. You didn't get it right. Through Christ, which strengthened me, I can do all things. So he tells you, if you see me moving from nation to nation, be careful while you clap. Explain there is an agency. When you see that I can do all things, it is not because I am sufficient in myself. I have found a secret in the spirit that the Christ can strengthen a man. That Christ can strengthen a business, can strengthen a man of God, an ordinary man. You can dare to say regardless the causes, regardless the limitations within my city, regardless what they think can come out or cannot come out of me, that here is my verdict on the strength of this revelation. I can do all things, not some things. To say some things will be limiting the power that backs me through Christ, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So when you hear the testimonies that happen through the prayer platforms, when you see the mighty things that God is doing through your ministry, thank God for the man, but make sure you look well. See the olive trees too. Make sure you look well and see that beyond ordinary men is a mighty God that stands behind them. No man can just make progress. Shabakatos kadebalakata. Men do not rise just by willpower. Hear me? It takes more than willpower. It takes more than determination. Every factor fails when the Holy Ghost is not there. Value fails when it's not there. Knowledge fails when it's not there. Skill will be barren and important when it's not there. Habarike sopras kadesh ekrokapatakatos katilakata. I can do all things. I can do all things. You may be ordinary, my precious brother, my precious sister. You may be ordinary, watching from across the globe, wondering, can anything good come out of my life? I introduce you to the minister of the helper, the paraclete. He is not a politician. He is not a king. He is not an elected person. The spirit of the living God, who helps ordinary men to command tremendous levels of power. Can I tell you? Never laugh at a man who has submitted to the ministry and the help of the Holy Spirit. You will bury your head in shame for the rest of your life. Many of you will prefer running around looking for men and women of influence who can help you directly and yet ignore the greatest helper. Did the Bible not say, except the Lord builds a house? It says they labor in vain. He never said they labor. They will not labor, but it is in vain that build it. That except the Lord watches the city. The watchman watched, but in vain, the Bible says, that it is vain to wake up early in the morning, Nigerians hear me, and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. Only God can give men rest. Man of God, Respectfully speaking, please hear me. There is a fountain that is greater than your limitation. My uncle promised to give me money to build a church. It's a recipe for frustration. When I sense you, lackest thou anything. The helper. We stand today by the privilege of God's grace as ordinary men who have been helped by God. He signed his signature upon our lives 
that the nation may lend the spirit again. That when an ordinary man unites with an extraordinary God, the destiny becomes extraordinary. So he says there is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power, man of God, hear me, do not give up on your call and don't try to look for fame and try to move around saying invite me. Leave all that nonsense and stay with the Holy Spirit. Stay with the Holy Spirit. You're a music artist, don't jump from pillar to post saying stay with the Holy Spirit. The greatest way to make yourself known is to make him known. Stay with the Spirit of God. In the place of prayer, in the place of fellowship, in the place of building, you see, let me warn you, let me warn you, walking with the Holy Spirit is usually not profitable when you start. So I warn you so that Satan, who is the master of the flesh, does not beguile you into naming your submission to him a waste of your time. If it is God you are walking with, you will be a fool for a very long time before the wisdom behind his dealings with you is revealed. So I'm giving you a word of caution. <laughs> Jesus was born of the spirit, but it took him 30 years of living supposedly an aimless life. But at 30, when he came in power, in three and a half years, he wrote something that cannot be erased forever. When you walk with the Holy Spirit, let me tell you the truth, there is a side effect because you will have to give up on your will many times. And that will put you in a position of perpetual insecurity in the flesh. I don't know the name of where I'm going, but I trust you who is leading me. And like a baby who is walking, even in the midst of your confusion, one step after another, while people laugh at you, you keep following. At a time you will ask yourself, God, where are we going? What are you doing with my life? But I can leave you with an assurance. If it is the God of the Bible leading you, the day he presents you to your world like a trophy, he will sign upon your life and it will become clear to all men that the God of the universe has shown you help. Let's pray. The one you helped has come to worship you. The one you helped has come to worship you. You are helper. You're my help. Has come to worship you. The one you've held. I want you to pray a sincere prayer. Lord, I lean not on my own understanding. I submit to the help of the Spirit. Someone open your mouth and pray. I submit to the help of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, come and help me in ministry. Come and help my family. Come and help my life. I'm tired of wallowing around in pride. I give up. I have guessed my own formula and done everything I know to do. It's only left me in pain. I submit to you. Spirit of the living God, Maranatha, come. 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 Someone pray just for a minute from the depth of your heart. This is a mighty church of prayer. Help, oh God. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. He said, from whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth.
Hallelujah. Let me stand in faith with the grace that is upon this house and this altar and just speak over your life. Listen. Some of you may need to go back and listen to this teaching again and cry before the Lord and say 2023 cannot be like 2022 again. I've seen the difference. I've seen how I walk by my own strength. Now I want the Holy Spirit to help me. As a man of God, you will preach and be tired. You will do everything you do and be tired. But when he comes, Jesus said, I have many things to tell you. I have many things to show you. Hmm. But when he, the spirit of truth is come, he says, he will guide you. Very simple formula, yet very difficult. This is the reason why we do not glory in the flesh. As much as we thank God for all the human honor, the applauds that we receive, and to him be all the glory. But I tell you sincerely, any man who knows the Holy Spirit is helplessly submissive to him. Because to live without him is like standing in shame. You are programming shame to your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with the grace that is upon this house. And I pray for someone, maybe a man of God, maybe a woman of God, maybe a prophet, maybe an apostle, maybe a business person, maybe a mother, maybe a student, maybe a politician or some head of parliament somewhere who is in need of potent results by the Spirit. You've stretched yourself from pillar to post, from border to border, and now by this message you have come to a point of acknowledgement that the missing factor in truth is the Holy Spirit. Maybe you have been pursuing power and you have ignored him. Remember what I taught you. You receive power after. That a relationship with him, embracing him as a, the helper who comes to help your limitation is the key to an enviable life. I pray for you. The grace to hunger after this ministry of the Holy Spirit. Receive it right now in Jesus name. Some of you by this night you will return and the spirit of God will begin to reveal things to you. He will open the pages of your destiny and with precision he will begin to guide you. As a result of that guidance some of you will need to make a 180 degrees U-turn because the direction you are currently following has nothing to do with your destiny. May grace be revealed, released upon you to make that turn if the need arises. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that at the end of this year, as a result of this conference, that you will look at your life and it will be evident to you and to all that you have been helped by God. May Ebenezer rise for you. The one who helps men. The one who has helped your pastor, helped his wife, helped this ministry. I declare that he's helping you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you give me a minute, Pastor Jerry, to make an altar call? Will that be fine, please? I just sense in my heart, my apologies, I've stretched the time. I need to make an altar call. When Pastor Jerry was prompting people, I heard so many people shouting from multiple overflows. And it is very important in a conference like this that when we gather and hear the word of God and pray and cry, it is important that we give people an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. So hear me, whether you are in the main auditorium or any of the overflows, or perhaps you are watching from across the globe, from Europe, um, America, somewhere in Africa, or even in this nation. We are getting to a time where we must never <coughs> trivialize salvation. Sometimes we make it look like the miracle of salvation is that cheap. It took Jesus' his life for that to happen. And there's someone who came for this meeting tonight who is saying, Apostle, if you will give me an opportunity, I truly want to make it right with Jesus. I do not want to leave this conference tonight without having a functional relationship with Jesus. Or there may be someone who is saying, I remember making this decision, but as it is right now, 
my life has gone haywire. Everything is scattered. I cannot even say that I have the assurance of salvation. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Now, here's what I want you to do for me. I will plead that in an orderly manner, those who are making that decision, if any, within this place, may I please request, if you can, to just gently step forward and come here. And all the other, all the other overflows, I want you to just step forward to the front of your LED screens I'll just count one to five. I'm walking on borrowed time. There has to be someone within this room and around who is saying, I want to make it right with Jesus Christ. There is no point pretending. Come. I'm counting one to five now. If you belong to that category, come. Let's celebrate them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Streams of joy, is this the best you can do? God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Just spread yourselves here so that you don't inconvenience those who are standing. Thank you. Now, I see that the counselors are giving you a card. So whether you are here or those outside, for those who are making this salvation prayer, I believe that um, the various platforms that you're connecting from should give you a link where you indicate that you gave your life to Jesus Christ and then there will be a system to follow you up and you can indicate from whatever nation you're connecting from and that this is a decision that you made and the Lord himself will give you a new beginning. For all of you who are here, a form is being given to you now. I don't know if you will have all the time to fill it, but then I will pray with you and you are required to fill that form. And please, if and when you are called, your attention is called, do cooperate with all those who are responsible for the follow-up. This is for your salvation. I salute you on behalf of Jesus and even the angel over this house for making this bold decision to come to Jesus. Very quickly, let me request that you lift your right hand. You may just pause your filling the form right now. And... All of you, I'm about to lead you to pray. Please make sure. Okay, I see an email there, salvation at streamsofjoy.org. So do well to send an email immediately and say, Pastor Jerry, I just made this decision for Jesus and I'm ready to walk with him all the days of my life and you will be followed up adequately. Say this after me, lifting your right hand as a sign of surrender. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I have been convicted by your spirit. Right now, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I am saved. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Your word declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. Receive the grace to walk in righteousness. I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and to the word of God. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! For